Uh, looking good. Morning thoughts. Morning thoughts. Morning thoughts. Shout out to the people going out to work this morning. Shout out to the people coming in from work this morning. Extra, special, big up. Shout out to the people who work multiple jobs. I have the utmost respect for you. Shout out to my entrepreneurs, my stay-at-home moms and pops, my retirees. Shout out to the drivers. Uber driver, Lyft driver, truck driver, taxi driver, food delivery driver, round town and long distance truck drivers. Shout out to the Brother Choice Stars trucking blogs. Shout out to every single clean hearted, good hearted person who wants good for others as much as you want good for yourself. Shout out to those in the medical um, medical personnel, those in the healthcare field and shout out to law enforcement officials to include soldiers, sailors, them kind of something there. All right. Big up to everybody out there that's tuning in this morning. And thank you for being here. There we go. Looking good. All right. <clears throat> First of all, let me say <laughs> I survived the party in this weekend. King Biggs. Yeah. They are. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Usually you take a couple of days to recover from that. Right. I, I could imagine. I seen all the videos yesterday of the parkway. Parkway was lit. And it was um, full. It was full of people. Bobby Condas, I think, posted some video. Big up to Bobby Condas and Jabba. Posted a video yesterday from the parkway. I couldn't even watch the video for too long, fam, because I felt like I was missing out. Even though I try to tell myself that, you know, I'm not missing out on anything because I had years of that repeatedly. But you can't help but when you see this kind of festivity to feel like, oh, man, I need to be there. Before I go any further, though, let me say this. I'm a bit under the weather. You could probably tell by seeing my eyes or whatever, but um, there's there's going to be some coughing and sneezing and all these things. I'll try not to do it too much on camera or to be too disruptive with it. But just so you know what's going on, right? My voice sounds like it's kind of cracking. Well, to me, anyways. But we're going to keep the show going regardless, right? I woke up this morning thinking, uh, I'm just going to take the day off and rest. But I remember what, uh, who say it? Somebody said it recently, says, listen, when you're going to take the morning off, at least let us know ahead of time or something, man, because I wake up in the morning and that's like their go-to, play it on her way to work and she got an hour ride to work. So, and the show is like an hour and 30 minutes. So that's a long piece of her ride. And now I got to go search for other things to watch. I understand. So here I am. All right. Morning fam. Audrey Wright, big up yourself. Ah, oh man, we got a lot of things to talk about this morning. Did y'all see that? Um, let me go from the top so I don't get thrown off. Uh, nobody is talking about Donnelly Donaldson anymore. Okay, that's just at the top of my board. It's not what's on the board this morning. I just thought I would say that. Nobody is talking about Donnelly Donaldson anymore. And I told y'all that it was going to be like that, that once the hype blew over, the sensationalism is gone. People will move on to other things. And so said, so done. I don't see anybody talking about her, but, you know, it is what it is. We'll continue to talk about her. They're supposed to be going to court on the 22nd of this month. And we'll be paying attention. In the meantime, Noah Maitland will remain in custody until the 22nd. 22nd, he could possibly get bail. He could possibly get bail and be allowed to fight this from the outside. So we'll keep abreast with that as it happens, right? Uh, yes, I can hear it in your voice. Pauline Graham says, yeah, I was I was coughing so much like 10 minutes ago that I felt like I was choking. And then my voice just suddenly changed because all the strain on my throat. But we'll, we'll work through it. Life ain't always perfect, but we work through it, right? Don't speak to me about my wife. That's the first one on my board this morning. Don't speak to me about my wife. I'm going to explain that to you in a minute. The kidnapper, the the, ki the person that issued the kidnapping threats yesterday, I'm going to play that video again for those of you who didn't see it. Update to him. Uh, we're going to do that as well. Jada Kingdom boyfriend puts a ring on it. For those of y'all who know who Jada Kingdom is, she sing the song about her boom, 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 boom. Our big Bati and all these things. And she got many other songs out there that's not about Bati or nothing. Uh, she's a really good artist, really good songwriter, really good performer um, with a whole lot of body. <laughs> and her boyfriend put a ring on it. We're going to talk about that a little bit. 
See, Jamaica new modern prison is coming soon. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that. New modern prison is coming soon. This has been announced. They're picking out the land space to build, and all this. And the land space has been selected to build, and all this stuff. You know, uh, when you're on social media, as soon as you say <clears throat> my throat hurt, you get like 100 different ther suggestions. Right now, the vial order says get a humidifier and ginger tea. That may help. I'm looking forward to seeing all the rest. Drink some lemon in warm water and some honey and blah, blah, blah. In my cup right now is, uh, you can't probably see it. I got two lemons in there that soaked overnight, right? And it's sitting in room temperature water, soaked it overnight, and I'm going to consume that as the show goes on. So it will quell the coughing. Of course, I went pharmaceutical because there's a numbing spray for the throat. And it's also a, chlor a chloroseptic. I uh, sprayed some of that in there like a minute before I started this live. So it's supposed to subdue the cough for a few minutes. You know, like 30, 40 minutes. I was feeling the same way yesterday. And I used the spray and you weren't able to tell. This morning is just a little bit more coughing going on. So we'll get to that. All right. Jamaica's new modern prisons are on the way. And Silk Boss became a person of interest and was ordered to turn himself in yesterday. All right. So shout out to the people who be cussing me out and say, yeah, don't up the done thing, man. And my G, this, this, that, and the other. When I said that that you need to Lego Jamaica for a couple of months or Lego Jamaica for a little while and folk function from outside, because right now he is on the radar of not only law enforcement, but he is on the radar of well, he's we're we'll gonna talk about it. We're we'll gonna talk about it. See, so he went from being the victim of being assaulted to the police saying they've seen the video circulating and they want him to come and talk to them. Then they said they are imploring and they are um, mo whatever they do, encouraging him to come and speak to them. And then it turned into he is now a person of interest and he must turn himself in by midday of yesterday. So we're going to talk about all that. Like we didn't see that coming and I said it, but okay. Uh, where do we start? Big up some people this morning and then we go on with the show. It's going to be a pretty festive morning because I have some side note things to talk about in here, which is probably going to be triggering to some people. So let me let me pick up the first 10, 15 people, then we get on with the show. See? So Great Goodies is in the building this morning. Big up yourself. Thank you for being here. Seymour is in the building this morning. Our detective Seymour is in the building this morning. Big up yourself. Thank you for being here. Asarin Odetta is here. King Biggs is here. Marcia Walters is here. Mr. Article Dandaya. Kirk Gordon is in the building. Kirk, big up yourself. Thank you for being here. BM is here this morning. Pussy Galore is in the building this morning. Wayne Nathan is here. Purple Royal is here. My sister Bromo writes in the building. Says, happy Tuesday to you and your beautiful family. Good morning, memberites. All right, Soldier 819 in the building this morning. Lady J is here this morning. Darlene Walter Riley is here. Janet Stewart's in the building this morning. Dion Ricketts is here this morning. DR is here. Vanessa is in the building this morning. Maxine Goodas Goal is in the building this morning. Stash in here. Stash, I hope all is well. King Biggs Daya says, I survived the partying this weekend. All right, King Biggs. Um, Karen notices here says morning so flow and the family and everyone that's tuning in enough blessings to all Juno Bryan is here this morning Sharon Spence is here good morning so flow and the family naturally yours is here this morning Rosalind Smichael is here this morning home tips is in the building senior sexy is in the building divine order Shalom at so flow TV and morning thoughts family from Chicago Donna Davis is in the building this morning. Uh, Vicky Victory is here. Good morning, everyone. I'll be listening. Busy at work. All right. Productivity and progress. Jane Ander is here this morning. Carrie Ann Jones is here this morning. Pauline Graham is here. Nicola Coleman is here this morning. And a bag of other people there. Prillis123, Virtuous Fire is here this morning as well. And Julie Tapper and O St. John and Mervyn The Point, Jamaica Kerr is in the building this morning. If I didn't call your name, then you already know. It's manners and respect, same way, right? Enough love. So here we go. 
Sharon Ingram, uh, Brickhouse, Sharon Ingram. Big up yourself. And T95 South is in this morning, says the Herb Corner in the area. They have any and every organic loose herbal teas. T95 South, the Herb Corner. The Herb Corner. All right. And Stash says, Silk Boss need a good lawyer to deal with the police them. He shouldn't go without one. We're going to get into all that. Let me start off first by talking about this though. Somebody contacted me yesterday with one long rotted. It, it wasn't a paragraph because from school, me remember, say a paragraph was four to six sentences combined. Make a paragraph. This was about four paragraphs long. All talking about wifey, my wife, Shakira. Your wife is disrespectful. She don't know how to take... Um, first, it started off saying trigger warning. I wasn't triggered. Your wife is disrespectful. She don't know how to take constructive criticism. Um, something about your luxury lifestyle, which she speaks about. And she must remember that it is us who finance your luxury lifestyle and all these other things. The, the paragraph, long and long and tired and long. I'm not the type to disrespect people, but I noticed a couple of things. For one, the people who actually do support the channel, who I can tell because they, they're here all the time, they never have much of anything disrespectful to say or much of any complaining to do. You know, it's the people who fly by every now and then that actually act like they, you owe them their life for a subscription. Let me tell you something. First of all, my wife is a grown ass woman. OK, she I'm not her daddy. I'm not, <laughs> I, I am not her daddy. All right. She is a grown woman with her own mindset. And don't don't expect me to ever you tell me something about her. Then I turn on her. That's not how it works. All right. I'm never going to turn on her. I'll probably turn on you and have to apologize to you later. She's always a part of my unit. So in a, my house has to be happy all the time. We already got our issues that we're working through because we're two different people, two strong-minded people that's trying to make something work with two babies in here. So I don't want to hear no extraness about she don't know if it takes constructive criticism and she's very disrespectful and you are going to unsubscribe from her channel. The person said, I have now lost all respect for her. Hmm. You probably never respected her from the get-go. I'm sorry. But a lot of people do this. Like somebody left on my channel the other day, after all these years, you finally said something that made me respect you. Am I supposed to be happy? And like, oh God, you finally respect me. I don't work for your respect. I'm, I work for me, as in me being a good person for me. My energy is supposed to draw like-minded people to me. That's how the world and that's how the world should work around you. If you're negative and you're dirty, you're nasty, you're disrespectful, you are uh, you all uncouth and all these things, that energy will draw that crowd to you and they will think you're the best thing since sliced bread because they can resonate with whatever you come with, right? If you're a person that's trying to better yourself, you're growing, you're maturing, and you're looking at life in a different light, a positive light, then that energy will draw that group of people to you. And I firmly believe that. I can't tell her what to say. Yeah, please tell her either. Yeah, that is one more time. He says, I told her that yesterday. Who want to leave, leave and who want to stay, stay. They she, came on my channel being shady, talking about me my no skin. Man. Talking know? about what? Talking about my skin. I addressed that <coughs> weeks ago. Talking about your skin. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then there you go. I thought she was on the other side of the house. I thought she's the right Tessa. She said, you heard her, right? She said, please tell her if you leave on going about our business. Uh, they were being shady, talking about her skin. See, one thing about wifey is this, with her vlogs and stuff. Even I've said it. I said, babe, you notice that the girl them that get a whole heap of views and subscribers and stuff on social media, that they always make up before they go on screen and they're always making sure their hair is proper and all these other things, right? Playing the part. And even when you see them out in public, they have to like play the part 24 seven. I'm talking about top YouTubers. And she was like, I can't do that. I have to be real to me. So if I have a skin condition, 
I want other women to know that I have a skin condition. Then I want them to know like what I use to help with it to get rid of it because that's real life stuff. And I said, wow, I respect that. So me not do no fake up on my channel either. The same soul flow you see right here talking to you, if you meet me out the road, you're going to be like, damn, he the same person. He actually talked the same way on the same topics, lived the same kind of stuff he talk about. Me don't want to do no fake up, make up nothing. So people do come and they act really shady. They say some shady stuff to you sometimes, and then they call it constructive criticism. They say some very disrespectful things to you sometimes, and then they call it constructive criticism. And if you hint to them that, well, that's very condescending and disrespectful right there. Instead of saying, I apologize, I, I'm not trying to offend you or anything, they will go in. Well, you shouldn't be so thin-skinned. Be glad that I'm over here interacting with your content because I'm sure I'm one of the people who supply your luxury lifestyle. Let me tell you something. First of all, if, if, if we had to depend on you for our lifestyle, which I don't think is luxury, but you know how life go already. Who don't have what you have think what you have is luxury. Until they get it, then it's the same. I'm looking at other people's stuff that have more than me. Like, that's luxury. Mine's ain't luxury. I'm barely living, man. I'm living. I'm surviving. I'm doing okay. We're doing okay, right? But some people see our luxury. And them say it's because it's their subscription that pays for all of it. And it's not. Okay? We have a life outside of YouTube. And that's what makes things so hard. Because there's a whole lot of other stuff that's going on behind the scenes that you don't know about, that's not revealed to you. But people get on your channel, they feel like you owe them because they subscribe. Now I subscribe, you must say the things I want you to say, and you must take me disrespect and all that. The same thing that she just said is the same thing I'm going to say again to everybody else that's watching. Check this out. When you feel like leaving, leave. I'm not holding nobody over here. I'm not begging nobody to come. I say like, comment, share, and subscribe. I might say, please hit the like button or something like that. But it's not a begging thing. There are millions, literally millions of channels on YouTube. And if you find one that does not resonate with your spirit, leave it alone. It no makes no sense for you to come over here, upset my spirit, me I upset your spirit, and you're tuning in every day for us. I don't want to run that kind of platform, and I'm sure she doesn't either. My, my wife is like this. She don't want to go through the back and forth, right? I'm the one that you, that's usually thick-skinned, so to speak. Like I'm like, I don't care what they say, but she's different, and she's a woman. And I remember when she was pregnant, she was going through it, hormones changing. Oh, no, no, a pregnant woman already, right? And there was a bunch of mean-ass, disrespectful people that were mostly women, that were mostly women, who you would think would be supportive of another woman, another sister. They were finding everything to, you know, to upset our spirit, to speak negatively about. So, yeah, pardon her if she's triggered by you and you're not meaning well while pretend to mean well kind of thing. I'm not on her platform and I can't tell her how to run it. That's her stuff. See? So please don't come over here, come type no four paragraph long about your wife, this and your wife, that. She's not my child. It's not like you're reporting to me, telling me, hey, I saw your 13-year-old down the street and him, him, I'm telling you he's getting in trouble. He's mixing up with them. You can come tell me where you seen my kids if you saw them into anything that they're not supposed to be into. But she's a grown-ass woman. Don't tell me nothing about her, please. And it's not disrespect to you. I'm just telling you, don't tell me nothing about her. All right? <laughs> With that said, yo, people are people can't be so special. I use the word special, right? <laughs> she is her own person, and that's why I love her. Absolutely, absolutely. And even I tried to change some stuff about her, and I'm not trying to change any of that anymore. I was trying to help her, or not help her, to get her to fit into a certain mold on social media. And I realized it's not okay. It's not okay. Let her be her. Let her be her. The same way you watch how you talk to everybody else, watch how you talk to her too. And I don't need to tell you that she's a firecracker. I think everybody knows that, right? She's sweet, all, all that, but she's a firecracker. So if you disrespect her and she feels disrespected, it's not my place to say, them never disrespect you. If somebody disrespect me, she can't tell me that wasn't a disrespect. It's my feelings, how me feel. Just like how if me disrespect her, 
I can't tell her where I get my butt that far after me not disrespect you. It's her feelings. She felt disrespected. I have to apologize and then find a next way to say it because I probably said it in a disrespectful way, whether it sounds nice to me or not. If it sounds disrespectful to her when it hit fear ears, then she was disrespected. Understand? And that's the way we deal with all people. If you tell me, hey, so flow, I'm not like I talk to me like that. That was very disrespectful. I didn't say anything to you that was out the way. I can either point out how you did disrespect me, or if you feel like I disrespected you, I'll apologize. And that's it. And we keep it moving. All right? But don't think your one subscription pays anybody's uh, bills and get them life. And sub how she said it, maintains your lifestyle or so you can afford your lifestyle. What the hell? Really? Come on now. Uh, Nitty Bitty Crafter says the end. Exactly. It, moving on. Moving on. I had to start out with that one. Moving on. Let's talk about the kidnap threat yesterday. Y'all saw this video, right? There's a lot going on in Jamaica, you know. When I first saw this video, I thought, oh, my God. First of all, let me say this. This family right here, the day before school start back, I don't know if y'all knew this, but the day before school started back, this little family, all three brothers, look at all of them look alike. All three brothers died in a fire in a fire in Westmoreland. Babes come from Westmoreland, right? Wifey's area that all three brothers died in a fire. It's tragic the day before school started. Um, and their sister was also burnt up in the fire, and she is in the hospital actually fighting, battling for her life. It is said that she is on the brink with less than a 50-50 chance of surviving. So I don't know what started the fire. I don't know how they weren't able to get out the house. I uh, don't know the situation surrounding it. I'm waiting for more to come out of it. But all I can say is some woman trunk boy, because this is type of stuff that, you know, if it wasn't you, I'm not saying she did. I'm saying this is the type of stuff that if it wasn't you that did it, I don't know mad people out there them kill off all of them pick me and stuff like that. We see it all the time. But if it wasn't you that did it and this was done intentionally by somebody else or accidentally, this is the kind of stuff that sends you to a madhouse, that sends you over the bridge, so to speak. Yeah. Imagine losing all four of your children one time. That's crazy. Just like the family the other day that lost the two brothers that came here on a work program and decided to jump off a bridge that everybody else was jumping off of. And one brother, then both of them got swept away. <coughs> Apparently, they weren't strong swimmers like they thought. And it was tragic for the family. So this man, just a day before school start, sad, sad indeed. So our condolences goes out to this family right here. Uh, I haven't seen or heard anything else about them. Tiffany had ish. Let's throw this in there real quick. I did a video this morning that I'm going to post on my other channel, Hot Topics TV. Your favorite star, Tiffany Haddish, is in a whole lot of ish. But I have all the details of the court case. Every single detail of the court case. There are even pictures out there. I didn't use the pictures in my video because I don't want YouTube to take down my video. That's to give you an idea of the pictures that are out there. It's children. I'm not going to put no children in them draws in any of my videos. I got the I got I got all the information for the complete printout of the court case and even the names are protected in the court case to hide the identity of the children that were involved. However, other people have the children and they have posted those to social media. Yeah. Uh, Kaz Robinson says the skit went wrong. Wait till you hear. When we're done with this, I'm going to go post my video up so you can get all the details of this. Wait till you hear the actual details of the court case. Then you're going to be like, see me either. Yeah. But that ain't what we're talking about here this morning. We're moving on. We over here to talk about something else. This kidnapper 
says the man who threatened to kidnap and women and girls is now in custody, right? That on Monday when school returns. I don't like the gleaner because the gleaner like is very sensitive about their material, even when it's really not theirs. But there's a guy that was saying on Monday when school returns, he's going to be kidnapping women and girls. Women and girls only in the Mandeville area in Manchester. And it sent everybody into a frenzy. See? Well, he has been caught. The man who was seen in the 55-second video threatening to kidnap girls and women across Mandeville, Manchester, is in police custody. Head of the Manchester Police Superintendent Shane McCullough confirmed this a short while ago. McCullough told the Gleaner that investigations are ongoing while the police await reports from the mental health facility at the Mandeville Regional Hospital. A Gleaner source had earlier disclosed that the man suffers from a mental illness. In the video posted on social media, site TikTok, the man stated that he was on a mission for the devil. Y'all saw the video, right? Okay, apparently he suffers from uh, mental health issues. However, I did a video yesterday where I said it doesn't matter if he suffers from mental health issues. He is not the only one that thinks what it is that he said on that video yesterday. I'm promising you all, all of you that lives in Manchester, that on Monday when school returns, I will be taking all girl kids. I will be driving around and I will be taking your child. I will be taking all women and all girls because we need them for an experiment. The devil needs them for an experiment, he said. We must support him. We must make Lucifer strong, right? Y'all better pay attention to the climate of what's going on in Jamaica right now. Some people dibble and dabble in things and, it, and, and then it, them can't manage it. And that's when them start lose their mind. Then we will sit back and say, well, him have a, you know, him chip off in the head. But uh, walk the journey with how he got to that place. Was he always like this? Or is this a recent onset? Or, you know what I'm saying? And then not only that. He is echoing a sentiment that is felt by many others on the island of Jamaica. Now, pay attention to the music, pay attention to the new fashion statements, pay attention to what the youth them are saying. It is a big issue in the schools in Jamaica right now. Remember one youth just gets stabbed up at school for a guard ring, right? When you hear them talk about guard ring and them talk about this ring, you have 10 doppy night and this ring fully load up, and all these things, I'm going to make my sacrifices. What do you think they're talking about? What do you think they're talking about? They're not, ta they're not talking about jokes. So pay attention to what's going on, right? His, that's what made his message so scary. Let me see if I could find. That's what made his message so scary. His message was scary because it's real. And people are expecting this to happen. People are expecting it to happen, you know. And it is happening around them. That's what scared the people. If this was a one-off where people can say, fling two Bible verses after I must say, in the name of Jesus or something like that, and it go away, people wouldn't be so worried. People are worried because the times we're living in. Don't y'all see how many women, children, even men, have gone missing in Jamaica, never to be seen from or heard from again. Okay. The people know that this is real. So him might have mental issues, which, which I said in the video yesterday. I said, this might just be a brother that's going through a mental crisis, having some issues, but we don't know because of the temperature. What's going on, actually going on in the country right now is bigger than that. So this could very well be either way. Still be cautious. Still be cautious. It could have been a distraction. It could be anything. I would advise people to still be cautious from them. So them all take picnic on women. My antennas are up. May I pay attention closely? And yes, I think I can play it because the gleaner 
doesn't own it. They're just playing a video that all of us have. Seeing? So with that said, he's in custody. And I hope they keep him there for a long while. I hope they keep him in some kind of, like, get him some proper help. We don't pay enough attention to mental health and wellness within our culture anyways. And every time we talk about it, it's the lowest viewed videos that we have. Like, in our culture, people already resigned to somebody OBIM. Or they're resigned to, boy, I smoke and go smoke with Johnny them over there. So somebody put lizard tail in I'm spliff. Or something in I'm, somebody put coke in I'm weed. Or uh, so, just, just anything. We can pray it away. Yes. Uh it up on him. We have to go pray it away. We can pray it away on these things. You know, we don't, and, and it stops right there. It stops right there. They're not looking at that, okay, chemical imbalances in the brain. Medication is needed to stabilize, et cetera, et cetera. A different environment, stress-induced psychosis, stress-induced mental breakdown, blah, blah, blah. Enough people are going through a lot as well, which could cause them to lose their mind. So keep him for public protection and his safety. I agree, Mervyn the Point, Jamaica Kerr. Keep him till you stabilize him. He didn't commit a crime per se, so we can't say lock him up forever. And he doesn't have any criminal record of harming anybody else. Well, not that we know of yet. So I wouldn't say lock him up forever kind of thing. And you shouldn't be punished because you're losing your mind. Not like in America where they're like, I've seen this many times in the U.S., so family member calls 911. Hey, my son, he's, you know, he, he has mental issues and he's going through an episode right now and he's threatening to harm himself. He's going to, he says he's going to commit suicide. He's locked in the bathroom. I miss the police come and kill the youth. Uh, and, and, and I'm like, what? wait, it's like, wait, wait, don't kill yourself. Let us get there so we can kill you. I'm like, how did that help? How did that help? And oftentimes the parent or the family is left like, damn, we should have never called them because he'll still be alive today. We see him go through these episodes all the time. We normally take him to go get help, take him to go get Baker acted, take him to go get whatever. This time, you know, it was a bit sudden and it, he was really acting up. So we call the police thinking we were going to get help. I look at things, I know some them really do a Jamaica still, you know? But keep him for a while till you stabilize him, until you figure out what exactly his issue is and put him on some good, like, like a proper regime, a regiment that will help him, you know, to function normally. Him look like him could be a decent person. He's well spoken and thing. But me don't know if that I want to impersonality them where I speak through him. Uh, mental health is a hell of a thing. It's a hell of a thing. Some people have multiple personality disorder. One minute, them will talk to you as Simone, and you turn around like this and look again, and then here is John. And you turn around and look again, and I'm David. And you turn around and look again, and hey, Stephen. People mad. Some people are going through it. I heard he's from a decent family. He looks like it. He sounds like it. Listen to him talk. He never come on and say, yeah, me I got to talk to you, woman, and pick me up. I got to rape them and murder them. And... He didn't say all that. He was well spoken. He looked like a youth when me would have said, went to university and chip off and studying. Remember that? We they used to say, ah, oh, too much studying, send him crazy up a Yui. I don't know if it was the studying or if it was the extracurricular activities they were doing while in Yui with the studying combined, you know? But keep him until you figure out what you do with him, please. Uh, another one I thought was kind of crazy was this right here. I don't know if y'all saw this. Triggering. I have my, top, my topic them on the board and up. Quite triggering. Did y'all see this? I'm going to leave it here for 60 seconds so you can get a good look at it. Did y'all see this? Yeah, yeah. All right. No, no. Look again. All right. <clears throat> Let me give this a five-minute talk real quick. This is, 
It was posted by Sleek Jamaica. Congratulations to prominent billionaire Jamaican businessman Paul Simpson and his wife, Tanya, who are expecting their first child. Sleek Jamaica got a beaten yesterday for posting this by mostly black Jamaican women. Now, the headline that it says now is not what it said yesterday. Yesterday, it says, congratulations to prominent billionaire Jamaican businessman Paul Simpson and his German attorney wife. And people went crazy. Yeah, big them up. I wish them all the best and all that. But TMI, too much information in the caption. What we need to know about our occupation for. What we need to know what she have and what we, what we need to know what she... <laughs> and I was like, they are going off. It was like literally like every comment me read on Dayasa was just going off about the woman. Okay. The comments were... I couldn't read the caption. It was too expensive. TMI. The next, <laughs> the next one says, damn, so detailed. The next one says, sleek businessman Paul Simpson could work. Uh, that's a lot of unnecessary words, another person says. They will mix up in a this. Ah, who them? A next person said. Next person says, is German lawyer her nationality? Or is our full job title that? A next person says, Father, me really happy for them, you know. But the caption, they have me away. <laughs> Another person says, totally unnecessary. Now, I mean, you could have just said congratulations and kept it moving, right? Or don't even look at the, the thing at all. Uh, I'm not interested. That not nothing to do with me. I don't know who he is and I don't know who she is. Scroll along. Nope. Them have a lot to say. And I think what triggered them, you know, you, you don't know me, you don't know me, you know I'm going to say it. You know, I, what, I think what triggered them, all right, somebody says the media at its finest, billionaire babies, congratulations, they are, these are lovely pics, noise, all right, who, I who them, what we have to do with this, all that caption and I still don't know who they are, the next person says, Last one, sleek is messy, German Jamaican lawyer wife. That killed me, <laughs> LOL. What's wrong? Because the comment them long. A uh, whole heap of them, did they? See that? A whole heap of them are there. And, and almost, um, it's still going, it's still going, it's still going. And almost all of them are not good. It's still a go. It's still, see that? For people who claim to not be interested, uh, well, not mixed between at this far. <sighs> I look at the picture and I thought to myself, I think I know why. Right? What's the issue? The issue is she's not a Jamaican. He's a billionaire with a B. He's not a millionaire. He's a billionaire with a B. I'm expensive. He's one of the 1% that they couldn't get, right? And she's white. She's German. She's accomplished. She's an attorney. She's, <laughs> it, 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 it make them feel a sort of way, right? So they're like, um, well, no, I'm mixing you know, this one. Too much information. Why did we need to know if she was a lawyer and if she's German? Nobody gives a damn. Yeah, big them up same way. But bye. I got <laughs> congratulations. You know the funny thing is, anytime the roles are reversed, right? If it was a Jamaican, if, if the roles are reversed and it was a Jamaican woman, which I've seen many times, kind of the, the star on them, they always like to post the pictures of them coming to Jamaica and getting married or getting married living in Jamaica. And I've seen many Jamaican women, black women, dark skinned black women, no denying she's a black woman, with her. Uh, night white knighting shining armor, and they're getting married and they're about to live life heavily, happily ever after. And I never seen that one bad comment in the comment section. Me not see no man in the comment section. I say, um, 
yeah, why she got choose one white man or why we need to know about him and where him do for a living and all that. Congratulations to them, man. Big them up, but move up. We don't want to hear no more about this. This has too much information about the man. I've never seen it. And I read these comment sections. So I'm wondering, like, why are they so heated about that? The man choose who him choose. It should go the, the other way around. Y'all want it to go the other way around. When is the woman choose who she choose? We hear how there ain't no good black man out there. That's why she had to go out our race. Her black man do this and black man do that and no tired of it. So she, big up to her and she's found love and all these things. Give the same to, to him. To, give the same to him when, when it's that way too. She's German. She's um, a lawyer. She's accomplished in her own right. He's a billionaire. The two of them link up and they're making a family together. Kudos to them. He found somebody who's good for him and move and keep it moving, right? I mean, I see the double standard all the time. But Mattel, I, I, and I could be messy. I could be messy. I said, why the man probably never want to know Jamaican woman still because you know how that go already. I'm probably not built like that. <laughs> He's probably not built like that. Like the average Jamaican woman is going <clears> to <throat> uh, bring some kind of <clears throat> drama in some way. And she just easy going, Miss German. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's me being messy. That's not me being factual because there are women out there who are very different. You know what I'm saying? But him choose when choose. So just left it there, man. And stop killing off on yourself about with all these shady comments. Now, I'm going to talk about mm, Silk Boss. Person of interest. Had until midday yesterday. As, as some basic school graduate at chat. <laughs> Brahma. Brahma, say as some basic school graduate at chat. Man, left it people, them y'all, man. Me no business who anybody want there with. After for them life is not my life. Me no cock up in a them bed. I'm not in their living room. I no mean a them kitchen. Me no business about people life like that. And I wish people wouldn't business about my life like that either. Your wife is this. <laughs> Stop it. Liar good for her money. Ain't nothing wrong with her occupation. I know the occupation them did mad about my friend. Them mad that is not a Jamaican woman. He's accomplished, billionaire status, lad. See, most people are thinking, okay, you made all that money, now you're going to take all that money over to the white community, right? Right. Whereas they look at it as if the black woman is not accomplished and she marries a white man who is accomplished, she's going over there to get some money. But black man is accomplished and he takes on a white wife. He's actually giving money to the, the white community. That's how people look at it. Some people. So they're up in arms. They're not necessarily up in arms because she's a lawyer. Jamaica full of liar. If you're looking for a lawyer to date, Jamaica would be the place. Because Jamaica have liar till liar can't find work. That's actually factual. Jamaica have liar till liar can't even find work because it's oversaturated. Everybody wanted their child to be a lawyer and a doctor and a teacher and a this and a that. One of them top profession there, even though teachers get so little respect. But, you know, liar doctor. So we have a surplus of lawyers. So it's not the lawyer that's triggering them. It's the fact that she is white, German, and that's who he chose. You could attack one Jamaican girl, man. Keep the money in a Jamaica. That's what that's what that's what that was about. Uh, I look at it like this. I feel money. When he was getting his money, when he was doing his sleepless nights, when he was grinding while others were sleeping, none of us was there helping him with his business plan layouts. None of us was advertising for his business and all this. So the man getting money. He do what he want to do with the money. If he want to take it, the white girl or white family, that's his business. I feel money. I'm not concerned about people money either. You know? <laughs> the only thing I would say is, if you're a billionaire, make sure you help out some people along the way. That's it. Just sow some good seeds of karma. If I'm that blessed. Yeah, what? How the, how the verse is said? To whom much is given, 
uh, oh, look, I'll finish that for me. To whom much is given, something, something. Like, in other words, then, if you are blessed with a lot, then give back a little, you know, and just keep that going. But in a business, who oh, him want give money to? Uh, oh, St. John says, get a prenup. I don't even care if him get a prenup. I'm that far not into their business. If him want to go over there, go dash with the whole light and get no prenup, and she breeds female, left him in a two years' time, which which is something that a lot of them actually do, right? Whoop, yo, you think woman a joke? I'm not talking about white woman. I'm talking about women, period. White woman, black woman, Hispanic woman, Asian woman, they all do it. Them find a rich man, and from the rich man log on upon them, that's it. If she don't like him, she'll say she don't like him about four years down the road, right? But for right now, I have a business plan in place in my mind. And what we're going to do is we're going to have these two kids. That means you're going to have to funnel money this way for at least the next 18 years. So and then <laughs> and then well, after I had these two babies, the judge is going to say, you can't change her lifestyle. She's used to luxury. She's been living in luxury. You live in a six point five million dollar mansion. You don't expect her to go live in a condo, do you? You don't expect her to go live in a two-bedroom apartment, do you? With your children while you live in a mansion. So here it goes. Spousal support. I don't see them already. Spousal support. Uh, watch your judge, no? Uh, uh, look at your net worth again. Oh, he's a billionaire, huh? Spousal, <laughs> oh, mm. spousal support. This is spousal support alone, you know. We're going to start talking about child support yet. Mm. 75, 80... Uh, 175,000 US per month spousal support, uh, child support now. Um, he is a billionaire, right? Okay, child support is and then hem you up like that. And women know that they know that that's what comes from it. So, them not nah stick around for no longevity. A lot of them, a lot of these women they ain't in love with these rich men. I'm not saying in their case that's the case, I don't know them, I don't care about them. I'm just saying the comment section for them was funny. But in general, we've seen this happen multiple times over. Have him pick them, stick around for a few just to solidify things. So when you go to court, the judge is going to say, but the whole time she was there, it was no love there. There was no love there. Every lovemaking session was him alone. I kill out himself. She was there with her plan in mind. I can't wait for this to be over. Oh, my God. I got two more years to go of this and then the end of that two more years there so you're at like year five or six a beer not nothing you say to her could fix anything she just want to argue today she was because <laughs> it's time to finalize the plan now so she want to argue today today she want to pack a bag and left for the weekend and take the kids and i'm going to my mom's and she she been wanting to tell you that but you a millionaire and you're a billionaire we have to plan this you know uh properly <laughs> We have to plan this properly and then plan it properly. And they leave and skate with a whole lot of money. And then you see them out in short shorts with some chisel body boy account. No, them have money, right? And she she don't have no time for all that. Where are my kids at? Oh, don't worry, they're in a good daycare. <laughs> or they they're in a good care. I'm in Miami for the weekend. What is it? What what else do you want to know? Mother. Bleep. Uh, dial tone. <laughs> Cha-ching. Steve James says, Cha-ching. Come on, women hit the jackpot like that all the time. And plan. Poor man, daddy, I think I found the one because it's so hard for me to find a woman that loves me for me. Uh, you didn't. You didn't. The same thing that you feared is exactly what's going on right now. I know just millionaire and billionaire get that done to them. Uh, regular men get that done to them who are... It, most of the man them that get a jacket, you see, is a man who she knows will take care of that child. Well, him have him like a good career and everything like that, you know. So, I just saw a fling that one your game car. I know who the baby daddy is, but you know, she say, boy, not even have a car, a bike, a bicycle, him ride. Yeah, and him lazy to him, no one work or nothing. That's why I didn't have all that time for me during the days. For I dig out my center, cause 
Yeah, the, him, Johnny D gonna work all the time and them something there. Cause him always a work. I'm here work, 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 him deal with. And him now work, work, work in the bedroom. Not a work, work, work out of the house. So I mean, have this like when I do the work, 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 and the boy end up breathing. me. So, so me, so me all fling when I get Johnny. Cause I saw Johnny work hard. Yeah, bank book fat and everything, you know, as a man where well, well have him head together and thing. And him love children. So, <laughs> him not even no question it, man. Him trust me. Is, uh, uh, am I lying though? Am I lying? <laughs> Somebody said men hit the jackpot also. How? How? Explain to me how. How we hit the jackpot also, Carl. We can't give jacket and we can't. <laughs> how we hit the jackpot also? We get a little old thing um, where our husband dead and left millions where she and him made and she feel lonely and we go give her some company. I sell where I sell services. That's not no jackpot. I sell she I sell where I sell services. She said, all right, since since Harold dead and gone, me can't play now. Because the Lord said, till death do us part, and the Lord take Harold from me. So me can go have little fun now. And that are gone. We don't come up in a nothing. And then you stroke granny two times and she decides say, hey, I want to keep you around. I don't know jackpot that. Oh. <laughs> it's services we're selling. <laughs> so we can't have no baby and pretend say it's out of love and stick around for a few years and all along in your back of your mind. Yeah, so we can't wait for divorcing. Yeah, I walk around every day and look upon the big house. I say, yeah, one day I'm here alone. I'm going to live in this idiot boy. Can't wait. I'm going to turn this room right here into my whole closet. I'm going to have like 400 pairs of shoes on this wall right here. Over here, I'm going to have a big mirror. So when I, I'm going to have a big mirror. So when I step, so when I steps in the room and I'm getting ready to go out, my girls, you know what I'm saying? We can have champagne in this room while we all get dolled up and get our face beat and all that. We can have all the clothes over on that side. And I saw them going, enough time. We not come up at all. Ain't nothing in it for man. You fling out your back. You get little compensation. Is that even exchange? That's it. <laughs> mm. Veronica girl says she don't have to be old. Yeah, true that too. Some man will get trick. We don't get trick. Yeah. We don't get trick. Mr. Marathon man. He come in. He came in your drought. And he gave you good loving. When you said never again, me by myself, no one, nobody else. And then you tell yourself, say, God sent David. Call him David this morning. God sent David. At my lowest point, God sent David. He's a godsend. Call David, like, deal with your proper with the matter. And David, no, if you rub your tongue and whisper in your ears and make you feel like somebody. And you know, Sister David, need help with him life. David start telling about, <clears throat> let me borrow your car today, babe, so I can go find a job. All right, drop me to work and you can keep the car. Come pick me back up by four though, okay? All right, got it. Drop you to work. Got a car yard. Uh, he go drive around with his homies. That's all day. Come back and pick you up four o'clock for sure. Man, this is stressful. I've been looking for jobs all day. I keep getting no, no, no. That's all I'm hearing. It's all right, babe. It's okay. You're you. It's okay. It's all right. Try again tomorrow. So I get the car again tomorrow? Sure. You can keep having the car until you find a job. In a fee mind, me not find no job. Me just get to one car for drive. <laughs> me not find no job. Me just get to one car for drive around as long as me want to drive around. Y'all get caught up. But that not have nothing to do with us coming up. Ain't no money in that. I broke people something that we talking about who get to the millions. And it's them women that get to the millions. Meanwhile, they might dig out everything. Not true. All in your car. Why the car always are broken down? The car are salt, you know. You know, they have a saying in the Caribbean, right? Or, well, in Jamaica, they have a saying, if you're sexing at the car, the car will go broke down. Y'all never heard of that? 
if your sex in the car, the car is going to broke down. Your car just start broke down all of a sudden. Your good, good car. That always car you go everywhere you want. You want go. Never had a problem with your car. Regular maintenance. Dirty boy David start driving the car. Right? Every minute the car in a mechanic. David not stop rev out your seat them. Front seat always laid back. You all wonder who in the... Yeah, I took Jamie, um, David, Steve. Couple of us went on this job uh, training thing today still. Yeah, this bigger boy, I'm always going to let the seat all the way back like that. I'm telling him, don't do it, you know, because you're going to have a problem with it. But it's all right, babe. Anything them selling, you believe it. I don't come up for we that, though. That's just running game. I'm talking about the millions. Who get to the millions? It's the women that get to the millions. I heard it all the time. I told my so, mind so that because his car always get hit. Yep, and that's another one. If your car always get licked, that means sex. The person that's driving the car is sharing energies with others, if you know what I mean. They might give it something. And the car in the top gets in an accident. And the car, <laughs> and it in the top broke down. Mm. I have one story to tell, but I don't bother to tell it today. <laughs> I'll tell it to her next time. Oh, I saw. <laughs> what, what your soldier? The soldier said, wash all him with the sink before he left your yard. Why? Life salt for a lot of people, eh? So anyhow, this silk boss thing here. Yeah. Let's talk about this silk boss thing. So silk boss was um, now listed as a person of interest. See? Uh, I told you, I told you, Dancehall Entertainer, according to Ari FM, big up Ari FM, Dancehall Entertainer Silk Boss has until midday, September 5th, today is the 6th, I went to go look up, did he turn himself in to the police, and me not see no information, Dancehall Entertainer Silk Boss has until midday of yesterday, to turn himself into the St. Catherine police after being listed as a person of interest. According to the Corporate Communications Unit or CCU, the communications arm of the JCF, Silk Boss, whose born name is Rohan Reed, is being asked to report to the Portmore Criminal Investigations Branch CIB by midday on Monday, September 5th, yesterday. They are also asking anyone who knows his whereabouts you see that? They're asking anyone who knows his whereabouts. Anyone who knows the whereabouts of Silk Boss to contact the Portmore Police at 876-989-8422 or call 119 emergency number or the nearest police station. That doesn't sound like just regular old I'm looking for somebody, does it? All this comes after the dancehall artist was seen begging for his life while being assaulted by men that were wearing masks in a video. Following the attack, Silk Boss in a recent interview, which was on stage, revealed with Mr. Winford Williams that he was robbed of a 1.4 million Jamaican dollars by the men because I money where did I use for buying car. That's what he said, right? And him friend them, set him up and rob him, take him money, beat him up. In related news, Silk Boss has been confirmed for the 2022 staging of Sting along with the likes of Jashi and Intense and others. New generation of dancehall. Sting is supposed to be coming back, I guess, resurrecting itself. Using the new generation of dancehall to do so. And there's a lot of feud going on between all these artists as it leads up to this new staging of Sting. I'm very suspicious, very suspicious, because <coughs> usually when that concert is coming up at the end of the year, the artists then would normally be feuding. But it, if you remember Sting in a time gone by, it used to be lyrical feuding leading all the way up to Sting. And then when Sting happened, the artists then would have to face off on the stage, right? This is a mere gunman war. 
and people actually I get backs up on them something there. So this don't look like nothing good, but anyway, let's thing we are talking about. Silk boss for turning himself. For what? For what? He said he doesn't want to talk to the police. Him said clear upon on stage. Him said, me not going to talk to no police. Man going to talk to police and end up dead same way. And sometimes at the same police them is what he said. All those words I just said is what he said. So, him not talk to no police. You see the picture with them post in the star yesterday or day before yesterday when him sit on punk coach with a gun on his lap. You see the video that I did that I said that's distasteful, wrong timing for it, that could send a wrong message, have somebody interpreting it as something different. People still flying down to tell me that it's an old picture so flow and it's a picture for your video shoot. Me no business about that. Those of us who don't know the age of the picture and all that, we're going to look at that picture when we see it as... Mm. Is he saying a gun him gonna use for defend the thing and these kind of things? Police depend him case now. This more seem like the man is a wanted man than anything else. Police can encourage you to come and speak to them. That's about all they can do. Encourage you to come speak to them. Once they give you a time deadline to turn yourself in. If you do not turn yourself in by that time deadline, then you are known as a wanted person because the deadline gone, right? And you didn't turn yourself in. So now they are going to be actively looking for you, probably put out an APB on you, pick him up any which part you see him and bring him in kind of thing. You're wanted. But what are you wanted for? They haven't said. They haven't said. They just said he's a person of interest. All right. Do y'all remember the politician that beat him wife or his common law wife? Box her up on camera, right? We covered it and even used the crate and lick her with the crate and everything. And they were running around the vehicle, around the car or something. I guess he forgot that cameras were pointed towards the property and it showed he was a part of. Andrew Holness's constituency, or his cabinet rather. He was a part of Andrew Holness's cabinet. Them kick him out of JLP, but he still re-registered as a independent and was still able to keep his position in government. Because a lot of people were saying, oh no, that's a bad image you're sending. At a climate like this in Jamaica where women are being kidnapped, found dead, beaten, abused, girls, same thing, rape, dash way. This is the message you're going to send as a uh, sitting member of parliament. You beat your woman on a camera and then you're allowed to keep your position. No, kick him out. Kick him out. The cries for kick him out got louder and louder. And the JLP, Andrew Holness, had no choice but to kick him out. I'm saying all when they all went to the police, this Jamaica Constabulary Force put out in media they said the woman refused to press charges or even admit that that was her in the video and then later she said that was her in the video but she don't want personal charges and she don't want nothing done he also said him don't have nothing to do if she didn't let me to you know i'm going to press charges too but me don't want press no charges either so they put out that because no none of the parties involved wanted to press charges, then we must let it go because there's nothing further we can do. So how come the same energy there is not applied to Silk Boss? Two man hold him and box him up. Him say him know who them is. Them say them not go to police, them not deal with police. Him say him not going to police because him not deal with them neither. What's the big deal? How come y'all didn't do that to that politician? If you know his whereabouts, call Portmore um, Investigative Branch at this number or call 119 emergency number. That's all like when, <laughs> that's all like when you see a wanted man, right? Or is there something other than what they're saying? And them just are remain cool. We don't know. But this not like they just want to talk to him about the video when take a couple of bucks in the video.
There was no guns brandished in the video. So it's not like they could be like, well, you know who it is. And we saw the, the guns. So we want to find them you there because we want to know if them gun real and if them have license to carry it. Those were illegal guns we saw in the video as they were boxing you up. It's none of that. They didn't see no guns in the video. The guys, them face mask up. Them now the police go say, I did it. And he said he's not telling police. So apply the same energy that you applied when the politician man, they beat up him. Listen, I think, right, they're so wrong. Them know what them are do. Them are set up the youth. This is a big old setup. If you really wanted to talk to him about what happened, you, you know how Jamaica run. Go find Silk Boss and talk to him over so. That's it. Why you put it on front page news? Put it on front page news that we're encouraging to come talk. Then the next day it says we are imploring. Then the next day it says he's wanted person of interest. And if you see him or know him, we're about call 119. Brother, if I see a place, I shoot up, I call 119. If me see gunman were wanted at the, the, the time, you call 119. If you see a rapist was on the loose where picture did in a paper, and so we call 119. That's an emergency number. That's like me telling somebody here, if you see him, call 911. What would you think? What would you think? If you see him, call 911. What would you think? Everybody will live a foreign right now. If police tell you, sir, if you see him, call 911. What do you think? What's the first thing you think? All right, sir. So. so my original statement still stands. Take your ass out of Jamaica anywhere you can. Next time you get a little flight to go book a show at Canada or anywhere else, carry the video them with you. Show the people them say your life is in danger or at least you think your life is in danger and have good reason to think so and you don't really have anybody to turn to so you're going to jam yourself for a while. That's it. Somebody said, oh, so Floyd, you talk like say bad man no have links all over the place in all country. Uh, anyway, him going can get touch uh, all this. Yeah, that's, that could be true. That could be true. But check it. You go somewhere and lay low, your chances are heightened that you will survive compared to if you stay right there so right now. You are easily touchable there not saying they can't touch you anywhere else you're easily touchable there and now who have police friend that's working on the outside of the law pretending to be good police and all these things can you know say a jamaica money change hands and things get done them can hem you up in a some stuff right now that makes sure that you can go nowhere or further your career when just start so yeah take for yourself and go work with it from out this up from outside let some stuff blow over. Come back later. In the meantime, you could work on coming back as a totally different person. Highly accomplished. Everybody know your name now. You solidified in a dance hall as an artist. And you left behind certain company and these things. And you can afford now to actually travel with security. That is a reputable kind of security. And not just your bad man bridging them way up. Gone. Not true? Uh, Demi Jervis says he's wanted for a crime. If if I hear, if you see him call 911, that's exactly what I would think. He's a wanted man. He's wanted for a crime. But when they ask them, what is he wanted for? And what are y'all giving him till midday to turn himself in for? They said, nothing further. Nothing further. Uh, Seymour says, Nuff Squaddy, a bad man. Just scroll through TikTok, them Nuff. <laughs> I say no more. <coughs> I say no more. I'll say big up to the good one, them. Even though some people say no good one, no out there. I'll say big up to the good one, them. And fire buns for the dirty one, them, because... It's because of them why the place is actually like it is. Because people can't say what them see. 
and people are forced to live in certain conditions because in fear of their lives and who's supposed to be helping them and looking out for them is actually turned against them and have the people them hostage and all these things. So I'm not to, I'm not to deal with that. Bad man a bad man. And if you're a bad man and <clears throat> you choose the life there, then hey, my hat's off to you, right? I'm not cry for you. I respect what you chose to do with your life and that's it. But me respect the codes. Bad man a bad man dealing a bad man business. Gunman and street thing a different thing. But when you're a police officer, that's going to take an oath to uphold the law, to protect the citizens. My granny can't come tell you, say, Juba down the road. Does murder someone in front of her and she's seen it. Because Juba, you're a friend now. You got to tell Juba before you put it in the books and go arrest Juba and say you have a witness that can come say it in court that she saw him do it. So instead, you're going to tell Juba now if you're going to murder my granny. So Juba can't stay a road and kill more people. Me can't deal with that. I can't agree with that and I can't support that. So dirty police is something that I can't, I can't give them no props. And at the same time, every time I say that, I have to strike a balance and make people know. So good ones are out there. If good ones weren't out there, dog would and yam would suffer completely already because there's a whole heap of bad ones out there. So thank God for the good one them that's actually balancing the scale a little bit. You know? All right. More, more, yo, more, how should I say it? More good luck and more best wishes to Silk Boss. I said it yesterday, the youth young, he's 19 years old. That's my son's age. So more good luck to him and more blessings to him. And I hope everything works out fine for him. Things don't really look too good though. But, you know, they don't really do nothing when all eyes are on it. It's the minute everybody stop look. Then you hear, boom, front page news. This happened. And everybody is like, damn, we saw that coming. Remember, SoFlo did say I'm sure I did left. Remember, and I hope nothing like that happens to him. I hope him stay the course, solidify in place, and do what he needs to do to take care of himself and his family and elevate him life, right? Nothing but the best. But trouble daddy, trouble daddy. If any JCF individuals, officers are watching this, I hope they actually speak among their peers about this. If the youth is not wanted for a crime, why are you guys putting him on front page and saying that he has till midday to turn himself in or involvement in a crime. Me not understand how things work at Jamaica as far as the JCF goes. Not everything, right? I more understand how things work in the US. And I know in the US they wouldn't have done it like that. They would have located him using police personnel. Even if them have got undercover and PI, private investigators, they would locate you and bring you in, US Marshals, all that stuff. They would locate the person and bring the person in. They wouldn't put it on front page. That's a volatile situation you're putting him in. Right? Somebody right now who is done says hell and don't really have much sense can look upon this and say, yo, dog, we know where the boy there, you know. And here what? Remember saying know about so and so and so and so. Yo, I forgot that show that before them get him in a car. And they all them bring him in there and talk, press him in more tell him the whole of we, you know. That's what y'all doing. That's what you guys are doing. You're literally setting up the youth. And I'm going like nobody out here no see it. We see it. We see it. So again, stop this, man. Stop it. If you see him call 119. Is a wanted man that? You have till midday today to turn yourself in. Is a, is a criminal that? This is not somebody you just want to talk to. Oh, look, can't go. Did you say go get him phone number? I get him phone number from some other contact and call him. Say, hey, you. This is Officer So and So from So and So. We need to speak to you ASAP. Oh, look, can't track him by him phone. There's like a million different ways to get to him. Literally, a million different ways to get to him. I watched them recently uh, arrest. 42 Doug is his name. And I did a story about it on my other channel. And 42 Doug, they followed 42 Doug across five or six states 
through an airplane ride, private jet, and a couple of vehicles. And they did all of that by tracking him through his phone, working with his local, his phone supplier. And Jamaica cannot have that many different phone suppliers. You have Digicel and you have Flo. So which one him work with? I him not have no phone. I'm here bang I'm use. Like me no know. There are different ways to do this. But you front page this, you're stirring up fire. You're throwing gasoline in the fire. And the outlook not going to be good because we have a lot of ignorant people, especially in the dance hall sphere, that start to think stuff and get real power. I mean, I know if them mix coke with them weed, them snort lines or what, but them get real paro, them dip on them pills where them a pop, and them start talk all kind of something. Yo, dog, I forgot dash them well before him go talk to them in a car. And the other boy go talk to them. Hey, matter of fact, remember me tell you, you know, say, you see when they did seem part on stage and them a talk about me not talk to no police. The pussy did a talk to police already. And fool him, I try fool with. Yo, go for him. It, <laughs> It could work out really bad. This could turn out really bad. But I'm on the outside looking in and I do what I do, which is I see what's going on, analyze the situation, and then talk about it. That's how we do over here, son. And that's what we do, right? He needs to give Jamaica a break, point blank. That may I say, and people are cussing me. Every chance you get, you tell people, forget Jamaica a break or run away and left Jamaica. No, I don't. And him may I tell, forget Jamaica a break. Him situation different. How many people you know in that situation? Not many. Because them feel same disrespect the police, you think? Oh, like when Joshi said, remember when Joshi did do an interview with Ipan ER? Funny enough, his biggest rival right now is with Joshi, but... That, none, that is neither here nor there. But remember the same thing when Joshi said, when Mr. Anthony Anderson asked Joshi about the crime and stuff, and Joshi didn't ask him, say, you have gun? Say, so you're not afraid. You have security? I ask him, say, so you're not afraid. And Joshi said, a police him use. Because a police, them down a station, and them a, a, a commit the crime. Even me, I was like, oh, shit. Youth. Somebody could have told him if he said that a different way. Even if you know that to be true, somebody could have told him if he said that a different way. Right? Kind of never come out good. But then Silk Boss come out on stage and said it. When Winford asked him if he's not going to the police, he said, me not go and no police. Come on, go to police and still end up dead. Sometimes I even see them police them. Just like that. So they probably feel, they probably feel disrespected. But is it lie he's telling though? Isn't this an ongoing thing that us Jamaicans have said all over and over and over and over again? When crime and violence happen, we don't know who fit on to as citizens. That's all. Because we can't tell who good and who not unless we in on the in. And, and majority of us is not in on the in. Majority of people I know don't know some dirty police. You don't know police where take contract to go kill people. You know just police. See? So you don't know who to tell. It has you looking at, and that's not the citizen's fault. That's their fault. I feel them fault that they make the pool get so dirty and murky that the citizens can't tell who is who. So the citizens them just have start think about self-preservation. Why better? I'm not saying nothing at all here, sir. Police are asking you what go on. Me never see nothing behind the block. Me never hear nothing. I went deaf. Me not chat to police. Can't blame them. Can't blame them because the name of the game is self-preservation. I see some, me see some people, right? Get on social media and say something like this. We're gonna wrap it up right here, son. I see some people get on social media and say something like this. Well, at some point, somebody has to sacrifice their life for a better tomorrow. So somebody has to start talking. Bitch, move. Because you only say that because you're not living in those conditions. 
You don't live under them, the regime there. You said that. Mecca did you live there and your family in these areas. And see how fast you're going to talk about, well, I don't care if they kill me. I'm telling everything. And you run, go tell. Yeah? The first time you run, go tell, you see? Then pitch over your sister. You, you're going to run, go tell again? Yeah. All right? You run, go tell again, then pitch over your mother. Mm, you got more family members left in a member. How many of them you can sacrifice? Because you want to tell. Because you are better tomorrow. You better you hold your car now, G. And better you live your life and try to come up out of that situation. There. If you get a paper, if you fly out, fly out. If you if you try a little something and it work, find a different place for go live. People backs are really against the wall. That's factual. Right? Yes, Veronica Gale. A lot of people don't understand, but a lot of people are trying to not don't want to understand that it's much easier to blame the citizens for the conditions they have to live in than it is to blame government for how they have the place set. And the, per the people have no choice but to live in it that way. We are survivors. So no matter what you throw at us, we will have to find a way to overcome. If it means that, damn, we can't talk to no police or we have to just deal with what happened wrong with, then it's so. And we have to do that. We're not on the outside. We're not out here talking about, we don't care if them kill off my whole family. Me I tell her who, who does that? Who does that? I don't want to bury nine, ten members of my family. Enough of them younger than me from gunshot. Because people say me a talk and then them eventually come kill me too. And then the place does not change. You sacrifice your life and years down the road. Do you think that nobody did this? Jamaican citizens have tried. There were people who stood up and said, Oh no, if you go kill me, you know, I don't care. I want Ron here to be a better place. Officer, let me tell you what I go on. Dead. The rest of them saw it. They're like, oh shit. You know, I'm not to say after this. Kind of like how they used to do on the plantation. Oh, you want to run away? All right, take his right leg, but take it below the ankle. And chop it off in front of everybody so the rest of them see it. Spread them wide. Do it right in front of everybody. Everybody else after that? Master says, working, working all day. Toby, you ain't gonna run? No, sir. Them's my people. You ain't my people. I'm staying right here with Master. Toby, no want him foot get cut off. He not try to run again. So the people are traumatized. They've witnessed enough trauma. They've witnessed people who came and tried to make a difference get executed and slaughtered. So the people them just stay in them shell and say, yo, you chat too much. Me don't know nothing. Me don't see nothing. Me don't want to see nothing. And I don't want to know nothing. That's facts. So the next time you get on your high horse on the internet, because on the internet, everybody is perfect. You get on your high horse and you start blaming the people them. I used to do it. I used to do it way back when. But when I understood the dynamics of what was going on, I've made countless videos since saying, I fully understand now what's going on and I no longer blame the people. I see what this is. Matter of fact, I sympathize with the people because they're mafia living at this. Yeah, some of us can run. Some of us can be on the out, way outside looking in and criticizing. Go in there. Since you want to criticize, go in there. Go live in there. You know, say, um, my dear friend called a couple of times and speak to us from Jamaica. And, um, well, not from Jamaica anymore. She left the place, right? That was a starch supporter. No matter what them do, them can't take me out of this. I'm staying here, my beautiful Jamaica. I love it. I don't care the crime and violence or whatever. It's not like y'all making it seem I need to reach her. Same thing. And she got try complain. Same thing. And find out say, who she was complaining to was friends of the people them she was complaining about. Same thing. When man start walk past you and blow off gun nozzle. I make gun sign. Chat too much. How much more are you going to say? After you just complain to the police, yeah? 
And then when you say to him, reach back over there, so to gunman, or you know, you know, see how that work. Anyhow, who knows it feels it's stash exactly. And some of we go on like we don't have no compassion for people, but I do. I do. Corruption, man. And I have to clean up. But until it's cleaned up, there's nothing we can do. So, again, my advice to silk boss is the first time you get a chance, take away yourself. Stay out for a minute. I'm not saying throw a stone behind you, forget about Jamaica. You can't fly in and do your show them and fly back out my youth. You won't have to be there in the mix up. Because once them start calling your name, you know. I start talking about if you know his whereabouts, call 911 or 119. And if you see him call, once them start do like that, watch. It won't be long before somewhere down the road, you are involved in so-and-so with so-and-so and on a drive by and a mask and shoot up so-and-so. When I think I drop me, I make. All right. When I look how I go on with shop done, I say no more. We're going to leave this right here so for this morning, though. Jamaica Modern Prison. Baby, I'm going to the gym. Malani up. All right. Give me like five minutes. Let me run through this part. All right. I don't like to interrupt her gym schedule because I'm here. One time he used to be like, I'm doing my show. Why you can't wait? But it's not fair. It's not fair, right? So you set up, you set a time limit and you go through. Uh, that's respect. I'm going to try to do that. Because when me ready for going to gym, I want to go to. Plus, the gym's been working wonders for her. Want to see her lately? So, yeah. Um, can't talk to nobody by the looks of things. Pauline Graham says, you can't. You really can't. And let me finish out that section by saying this. I have never had a bad encounter with police officers in Jamaica. Every, time, every encounter I've had with them is a good encounter, and I have the utmost respect for them. And I've said this before, my grandfather, lifelong police officer in Jamaica, my father, J, my father, JDF, my grandfather, his father, JCF, right? So it's in my family anyways, and I know what it takes to do that work because me, myself, although I served in the U.S., still went into that line of work. So when I say, yes, there are good ones in there, I know what it feels like to be inside of an organization where you thought you could make change and you can't. But yet still, you have to try and maintain your goodness even though there's so much going on around you. So I speak from a place that's personal as well, right? So again, big up to the good squad of them because they are out there, right? All right. Here one. This new prison thing that's happening in Jamaica. Does Jamaica need a new prison? I remember the UK said they were going to give how much money to Jamaica for build a new prison, a state of the art prison. And everybody was like, including me, look on them, slave master, slave yard. Why don't they give us a uh, training institutions where the youth them can go learn a skilled trade, maybe mechanics, maybe, because a youth go learn mechanic, you know, and learn for fixed car. He can leave that certified and go open him own mechanic shop. And next thing you know, he's making a whole lot of money, right? Why don't they give them uh, something where they can learn a skilled trade and pay that off for them so they don't have no overhead? That's giving somebody a fair shot at life, right? Who is underprivileged. Why are you with prisons? But the way how things are run, I think a prison is needed. I think more prisons are needed. It's sad to say, but I think more prisons are needed. But I think they need to do it differently, though. We don't just want to fill up the place a prison and just start throw everybody in a prison. I told you all before, I see it coming to Jamaica as well. The world is changing around us. Pay attention. Jamaica is just one country in the world. Jamaica mimics the U.S. a lot. In the U.S., we have what's called the prison industrial complex. Okay? In the U.S., we have the prison industrial complex. Prisons are privatized. They're put on a stock market. People invest in prisons and make millions of dollars profit off of prisons. 
I see this coming to Jamaica. Hence the reason why the Prime Minister still keeps saying he's looking for stiffer penalties for anybody caught with a gun, but you will never hear him address how the guns are coming in. Just anybody that we catch with it should be getting 20 years and 25 years. Well, watch the mathematics to this. If you don't seal up how they're coming in, they will always be coming in. And anything that's illegal sell for a whole heap of money. Walk with me. So if there's a constant flow of them coming in, nobody really care about how many years. They care about how they can do it now, like where they can get no feet. Criminals have always been criminals and will always be criminals. Criminals will always be around. Law-abiding taxpaying citizens follow the law. Criminals don't give a damn about where they pay your books until you catch them, right? So therefore, they will always be armed. They will always have guns. The poor citizens, though, will be freed now more than ever. So now they'll be like, well, I'm used to carry a one gun even though FLA say, them not give me no permit. I mean, I don't know why them say it, you know, because me is a loyal, me is a taxpaying, law abiding citizen. I don't have no record. I can't get a little gun to protect myself. But look how much part I live. And look what I go on around here. So I have a little thing. But I don't use it do nothing to nobody. But I just feel, say, you know, if gunman juk me down one day or something like that, broke in my house, who will wake up in them house in the middle of the night? And three man are run through your house. So me just keep me little thing for that. But no, the Prime Minister say at 20 years, he might get anybody where him catch with one, him no business, criminal or not. Boy, I can't arrest the 20 years. So now, me have to go left. I see that as a plot to disarm the people. One, you have the FLA that has a bunch of bullshit rules that you have to go through in order to get a firearm to protect yourself. And now you have the prime minister I talk about. So when the FLA done turn you down already, I guess the citizen's other option is wait for the gunman them to come. And when them come, I wish you all the best. It's not like Jamaica have a quick response team anywhere. It's not like you dial 119 and police dead in like five minutes flat. They're disarming the people, which will only create, because some people who are not criminals are still going to say, yeah, but rather be judged by 12 than carried by six, so I still carry my thing. I have police catch me with it, I suck. Well, they're going to be hitting you with maximum penalties and putting you in these prisons for trying to protect yourself. So again, until they could overhaul the FLA, Make it more easier for law-abiding taxpaying citizens to get proper training for and carry a uh, permit to carry a firearm to protect themselves and their family until they overhaul that. And until them plug up these holes that these guns keep flooding into the country through. Until they take care of all those other things, nothing is going to work. Everything is going to be working in their favor. You're going to prison. No, I hear nothing from you. I get catch with the gun. The law on the book says, there you go. In the cell. In the cell with the criminal them. And the criminal them will probably be out here still. Gun up to the T. When all you was trying to do was protect yourself. So we have to think about all that. In recognizing the need to upgrade Jamaica prisons, the government has reiterated that it has identified land now to build a proper prison facility locally state of the art prison that is you can go to jamaica loop news and read through this article the headline of the article says the government identifies land to build new modern prison and it has andrew holness giving a speech on it the statement was made by prime minister andrew holness while responding to a question during the jamaica diaspora town hall meeting in trinidad and tobago last week in Ghana, we are Trinidad to talk about new prison at Jamaica. For years, there has been a back and forth in the debate to build another prison in Jamaica since the 2015 offer by the United Kingdom 
to the then People's National Party or PNP administration. There were initial reports that the Holness administration had rejected that offer in 2017, but Andrew Holness stated that in 2020 that he did not reject the offer that was made by the previous government, that was made to the previous government. Asked last week whether the government has launched a drive to build more prisons in Jamaica, Andrew Holness responded, we didn't launch an initiative to build more prisons. To be frank with you, I think any society would have to build less prisons, but we do need to upgrade our prisons, he admitted. We are now focusing on building specialized, high-security prisons, and we have... I'll open our listen. We are now focusing on building specialized, high-security prisons, and we have identified the land now to build out a proper prison structure for Jamaica. So that's in the process of being developed. That's so that is in the process of being developed right now. But I don't think that we have announced it. <laughs> well, you announced it now, sir. In fact, during his contribution to the 2022 to 2023 budget debate in the House of Representatives in March, Holness first made mention of the government's plan to build a new prison when he described the current correctional facilities locally as a national security risk. Too often, our intelligence points to crimes being directed from prisons including the ordering of murders, he told the House of Representatives then. He added that the phones and other contrabands do not walk into the prison by themselves. As it stands now, our prisoners are a national security risk, our prisons. Yeah, then they walk in there by themselves, sir. Well, how do you think them get in there, sir? The phones and other contrabands do not walk into the prisons by themselves. It kills me when they actually say these things that we all know already. We know some of them not walk in there by themselves. We know who carried them in there too. So, so, you come repeat, this is what? The Prime Minister said that the then government would be moving to address that risk with, among other things, the construction of a modern high-security prison. He said that having last year tasked Minister of National Security, <laughs> Dr. Horace Doolittle Chung, and the Jamaica Defense Force, JDF, with the task of finalizing the design for a high security prison, the plans are close to completion now. And that the land has been located and secured. We consider this a matter of great urgency to be expedited through the public investment process. He noted that the efforts will be made to find the funding to start the project in the upcoming physical year, which got underway on April 1st of 2022. All right. So just a heads up for you. New state-of-the-art prison is on its way. The plan is completely laid out. And on top of that, He's making speeches about how to fill prison. Because that's what the gun thing is about, is how to fill the prison. All right? Anybody you catch with one. And guess what? Jamaican people are so tired of this gun crime situation that they will go right along with this and sign the documents that says, anybody you catch with it, lock them up for 25 years. Without looking at all the other things that are involved. With that said, we're going to end this right here this morning. Food for thought. Have a wonderful day. Big up on yourself. And I'll catch you tomorrow right here. God spare my life on SoFlow TV. Morning thoughts. All right. One love. Brummel right. Brummel, thank you. I appreciate you greatly. Brummel says we need hospitals in all parishes. Is this entire administration going first in the high-end prison? Kiss me teeth. We can go on and on all morning about this, but I'm going to cut this so I can go to gym and all these other things. But you're absolutely right. A majority of our public hospitals are in deplorable condition and need an upgrade.
So that's a good place to start if you really care about the people and their health, right? But a prison where I talked about this morning. So, all right. One love. Peace.